right, guys. You know, it is just another yuck, depressing day in the great state of Texas uh, here on this. Where the hell are we? Tuesday, April 11th, 2023, and I am in the hell hole, the shit hole town of Katy, Texas. I had a I had a request from someone uh, to bring a uh, you to bring you a video from the bowels of Katy, Texas. As far as I can tell, Katy, Texas uh, is it, it, pretty much. I'm about. I'm still 40 miles west of Houston in this suburb from Hill called Katy, Texas. This is about the sixth one of these giant RV places I passed where every one of these RV lots has about 50,000 of these giant fucking planet-eating RVs in it. So anyway, this is the view from Katy, Texas. The, uh, a, a, a true pit from hell, a true uh, poster child of the end times. But, uh, <clears throat> so I'm sitting here, I've got all my warning lights still on. I've got my brake ABS lights on. I've got my uh, tire lights, my tire pressure lights on. So I went and stopped at a Bucky's a few miles back and I topped off all the tires. I'm 100% sure that every one of these tires uh, has 35 pounds of air in it. Uh, there is nothing wrong with the air pressure in any of these tires. I, I reconnected my ABS uh, brake system at the fuse box. I put the fuses back in, went on a test drive. Everything is, is working fine. It's no longer just going into the ABS when I tap on the brakes. Everything in this truck uh, is fine, and all of these goddamn warning lights are still on. I called my mechanic, and he told me it's just the damn sensors in that in that back right tire are uh, lighting up all of these lights, and uh, he told me to go ahead with my life. Anyway, so that's what I'm doing, driving through the shithole of Katy. Texas. Uh, good fucking God, you can't see. This is one of these uh, outlet malls over here. These never ending fucking outlet malls. But uh, anyway, I am not here uh, to talk about Katy, Texas. I just wanted to uh, honor a request to uh, bring a video from the hellhole of Katy, Texas. Uh, so, <clears throat> actually, I'm gonna hit and, and bring another request. Uh, Vegematic, my good buddy Vegematic, has told me he wants to hear the story about my trip to the Balmoral, the Balmoral Hotel uh, on East Hastings Street in Vancouver, uh, British Columbia, up there in Canada. And I've been racking my brain trying to think of what year this was. I'm thinking it was 1990, that it was the spring of 1990. Look at this clover leaf from a hill. Katy, Texas. This is a remarkable piece of engineering. Uh, so as my buddy Kevin and I uh, decided to take a road trip pulling out of Santa Cruz, California. We, uh, so we start out of Santa, out of Santa Cruz and uh, Kevin and I both enjoy Staying at these run-down old flea bag old hotels, uh, they're about one fourth the price and of you, you know a real hotel. 
and uh, they usually have more character. So our plan was to, you know, to head north out of Santa Cruz and stop each night and spend the night in, you know, the seediest, rundown, flea bag uh, hotel that we could find in each town. And so we started out in San Francisco where we already had, that, that was the Shawmut, the Shawmut Hotel in the Tenderloin, which was a half a block from uh, the Union Square Hilton Hotel for about $500 a night. Now, <clears throat> I don't know if the Shawmut still survives. Uh, great hotel, it was our favorite hotel, had been for years was the Shawmut Hotel uh, in downtown Tenderloin district of San Francisco. So we spent a night there. Then our next stop was Eureka, California, but we were unable to find a, a flea bag hotel in Eureka. So we just stayed at the uh, at the Motel 6, which was in many ways worse than a flea bag uh, hotel. So uh, Eureka was a bus. So next stop was Portland, Oregon. And I have no memory. I have the vaguest memory of the uh, CDS hotel we f found in Portland. So our next stop was Seattle, Washington, where it was just an unbelievable coincidence, unbelievable coincidence, that we pulled into Seattle, Washington the very last night that the Pioneer Hotel uh, was in business. Unfucking believable Walk into the lobby of this run-down, beat-up, flea-bag hotel to find out it was the last night they were in business. Uh, the desk clerk, he honestly did not know if the Pioneer was going to be demolished or whether they were going to, you know, uh, do like, look like a little do-over and make it a boutique hotel. He wasn't sure. So anyway, we had the uh, great pleasure of staying in the Pioneer Hotel in Seattle, Washington to close out its long history. Uh, I do remember uh, pissing in the sink. Uh, you know, the, the, the bathrooms in all of these places are down the hall, <clears throat> but uh, some of them have sinks and, and the room, you know, the toilet is always down the hall. So we did enjoy pissing in the sink uh, <clears throat> the last night of the Pioneer. And the tragedy of the Pioneer, other than it closing, was I left my pillow, my $86 uh, Macy's uh, goose down pillow, uh, who I had named Head of Feathers. Head of Feathers was left behind at the Pioneer Hotel, and I was very heartbroken over the loss of Head of Feathers because uh, well, she was the greatest pillow I have ever owned in my life, the $86. And, and this was, I bought that pillow in the mid-1980s for 86 Well, I didn't. My dear, sweet, uh, late, great wife, uh, bought those $86 pillows at Macy's. So I was all depressed over the, the death of Head of Feathers. <clears throat> so we pull into Vancouver, uh, British Columbia and Washington, which is a beautiful town. I've always enjoyed Vancouver, but I don't know anything about the town. We knew nothing about it. Uh, it you know, we went exploring around, and so we were, uh, since we didn't know anything about uh, Vancouver, <clears throat> you know, we asked around, <coughs> kind of explained what we were looking for, and of course, most people giving us these blank stares, 
but the consensus was that we should head to a place called East Hastings Street in Vancouver. That seemed to be the clear choice of the locals that if you were looking for a, uh, you know, a seedy, run-down, fleabag hotel in the middle of Skid Row, that there was no better option than East Hastings Street. So we found our way over to East Hastings Street and, uh, you know, parked the car <clears throat> in a, about as safe of a parking lot as we could find. And so we start down East Hastings Street, neither one of us ever having been there before. You know, stepping over the junkies and fending off the panhandlers and the hookers and the drug pushers and uh, in this colorful neighborhood trying to keep from stepping in piles of human shit or accidentally stepping on a on a needle or something and uh, so you know we're so what we're doing we wanted uh, probably the idea was to check out like three to five uh, uh, you know possible candidates and choose, uh, just, you know, just getting the energetic hit off of it and whatnot. So I don't know what number I'm thinking it was about the third place we went to. I remember to this day, it was the Balmoral Hotel. The Balmoral Hotel on East Hastings Street. So <clears throat> we open up the door we, we open up the front door of the hotel and to the lobby and there were all of these uh, you know threadbare uh, beat up old uh, armchairs and shit sitting in this musty ass lobby and I'm pretty sure it was when we when we you know our eyes were adjusting to the gloom of the uh, Balmoral lobby and uh, it was along the left wall that there were like a line of like three people just completely passed out I mean unconscious uh, you know just falling out of their armchairs it looks like they had probably just shot up a bunch of heroin or something so he had those and, and uh, I, I'm already ready to turn the fuck around and uh, like so Kevin's walking kind of ahead of me so we, we we take a couple of steps into the lobby and now our eyes are pretty adjusted and I'm pretty sure this was along the right wall where there was no chair and what it was was slumped unconscious on the floor was this fucking uh, uh, you know this obvious junkie and the, he had this big gash across his forehead and blood was all was dripping all over his face and dripping off his chin. He was he was kind of half sitting still, splayed out on the floor, uh, kind of half sitting, you know, with his head uh, leaning over on his shoulder, you know, kind of forward and leaning over on his shoulder with with blood. Uh, dripping uh, off uh, off of his face and, and not one peep not one person because they're either all asleep they're unconscious they're uh, OD'd and uh, no, obviously no sign of a quote desk clerk and uh, so I'm turning around to get the fuck out of the Hotel Balmoral and, uh, and I'm going Kevin uh, I think it's time to move on and he looks at me I mean with this completely nonplussed look on his face and he goes 
well, hell on, let's at least find out what the price is on the place. <laughs> oh, God. And I said, brother, I said, you are welcome to stay at the Hotel Balmoral on East Hastings Street with you and your junky buddies, but I've seen just about enough. <clears throat> and so we headed on down the street. I vaguely remember the, uh, the hotel that we did stay at, but I do remember sharing uh, our story uh, with, with the residents of uh, <clears throat> of Vancouver, British Columbia about our three minute uh, visit to the Balmoral Hotel. And they all congratulated us for living through it. But actually the Hotel Balmoral uh, was not the, uh, the worst hotel I've ever stayed at. Now it's the, it's the only hotel where I've actually seen people with, uh, you know, open bloody wounds, <clears throat> you know, dripping blood off their faces. Uh, it does hold the lifetime record for that, <clears throat> but if I had to pick my most memorable hotel, I have obviously I have no, I, no clue what the name of it was. It was in Honduras, and this was in the spring of 1992 I'm thinking probably two years after the Balmoral <clears throat> was uh, we were coming back from Costa Rica it was me uh, and these three other folks it was me driving there were two guys two young kids from uh, from Holland and this fucking psycho bitch from San Francisco uh, riding in the, uh, in, in the back of my truck. And, you know, you, you want to get your gringo ass <clears throat> off the, uh, you know, off the road when darkness falls on you in Honduras. So the, the sun was going down. It was getting dark. We were hungry. I uh, wanted to find a big steaming plate of beans and rice and uh, so we had to, we just had to take whatever we could find. <clears throat> so we come into this little third world uh, shithole, who the hell knows where the hell this thing was. I, I mean out in the middle of fucking Honduras, I mean we're talking way off the uh, eco-tourist track shall we say so uh, pull in to this little hovel and and get out and uh, you know the little Honduran woman looking at us very suspiciously so these gringos come uh, these dirty grimy gringos come climbing out of this truck uh, looking for rooms and obviously the, the not one room had been taken so we uh, we uh, did just took what we could get I remember the price of a room was two dollars per night two dollars per night was the uh, was was the price of each room so I got my own room I didn't want to share a room with anybody so I go in my room which is essentially is this beat up old bed and a you know one naked light bulb swinging from the ceiling probably about eight by ten feet is the room and over the bed is like a, you know, paint, uh, was a blood red uh, skull and crossbones. Uh, so I guess I have been into two uh, hotels with blood dripping off of somebody's face. So there is a blood red uh, skull and crossbones 
with a, you, you know, dripping blood over the bed, and it said, no gringos, is what it said under the, uh, under the bloody, uh, <laughs> the bloody uh, skull and crossbones. Uh, you, so you can imagine what the, uh, what the bathroom looked like at this place. So uh, I survived my trip to the bathroom, but we needed to take a shower. And you know, I, I don't care how nasty a, a, uh, a room, a hotel is, that somewhere they're going to have a shower. But there was no shower uh, anywhere in evidence. I mean, obviously a cold shower. And it goes without saying it would be a cold shower. Uh, but no shower in evidence. And, uh, I mean, we were dirty, grimy, sweaty. And we all needed, uh, all four of us needed a shower. <clears throat> so, uh, you know, I asked the woman, what, you know, donde esta la ducha? And, and, and she kind of laughs, you know, the gringo looking for a shower. So she points us to the middle of the yard, the, the backyard. It was just this dirt backyard. And in the middle of the, uh, of the yard, was this big blue plastic bucket and a hose and I so I point to it and I said uh la ducha and she and she nods yeah that's the fucking shower gringo have at it and uh so there were these these little kids there were probably like six little kids uh watching with great interest the uh gringos looking for a shower so we said, what the fuck? So we go out in the middle of the uh, hotel grounds, <clears throat> out in the wide open. I mean, no curtain, no nothing. Uh, I turn on the hose. The four of us strip down naked, and, and we're standing there uh, naked in the middle of the yard, uh, hosing each other off uh, with the garden hose. Uh, and pouring buckets of water over each other's heads. So uh, we were great entertainment for the uh, neighborhood children in that little village in Honduras. I'm, I'm sure they're still talking about us in the No Gringo Hotel. Uh, I could uh, write a whole book about uh, Latin American hotels from hell you will have to, uh, if you want to find out about my adventure in the, uh, in the Hotel Moderno, the modern hotel, you can uh, go find my Peruvian plunge, uh, my Peruvian plunge book, and I think probably chapter 18 probably chapter 18 maybe 19 if you want to hear the Stambones adventure in the Hotel Moderno you can go listen to that but right now uh, I have to pay attention to my driving because I'm coming into the uh, shithole city of Houston Texas and uh, with all of my warning lights flashing, so I better pay attention to my driving. Hot Atlanta, GA, here I come. My guys.